Hello my friend, as you may have already heard, Metal Slug Tactics is an awesome turn-based tactical RPG with some roguelike elements, and it's got quite a few unique gameplay systems. It'll definitely take you some time to get used to everything in the game, but don't worry, in this guide I'm going to teach you how to play Metal Slug Tactics from top to bottom. The most important thing to note here is that you always need to be on the move in this game. The more you move, the more you maximize your character's potential. Basically, moving as much as you possibly can on every single turn will increase how many dodges your character earns, which helps you avoid damage, but also, it earns you adrenaline points which you use for your special abilities. This means that Metal Slug Tactics plays pretty differently than other games of this type, and you need to think of it as you're running and gunning like a 2D action game, but it's a tactical, you know, strategic turn-based RPG. You can always see how much adrenaline and dodge points you have in the top left character portraits, or when you have a character selected, you can see that info in the bottom left as well on the character panel. And while you certainly won't always be able to move your maximum distance on every single turn for strategic reasons, keep in mind that moving in this game actually gives you better offense and better defense. This is something you might be hearing and thinking like, okay, I think I get it, okay, sure, whatever, but it's something that will probably take you a few hours in-game just to switch your mindset, to kind of wrap your mind around it, because so many tactics games don't play like this, whereas in this game, you feel like you're on the move at all times, you feel like you're the aggressor. Now let's talk weapons, and one thing you have to keep in mind is that friendly fire is on in this game, so you will absolutely end up hitting your teammates at times, and sometimes it might even be the desired solution to a problem you're facing. Every character has two weapons. The first one is your basic one that you can just keep using forever. It's your standard attack, if you will. And then your second one is your special weapon with limited ammo. It hits way harder, but you have to be strategic about its ammo usage. And on the default difficulty, you don't have to worry about running out all that much, but it's still something you don't want to pull out for every single attack. So what I'm getting at here is that feel free to use your special weapon often, but make sure you save some ammo, especially for the bosses at the end of stages. Another important thing to note here is that weapons all have different ranges, the number of times they fire, and impact zones. A standard pistol might only shoot one or two times in a straight line, but a grenade or launches or other crazy weapons can have all sorts of different firing patterns, ranging from, you know, squares to S's to crosses, all of the crazy things, basically. By default, you can only fire your weapon or use a special ability once in your turn, but of course, rules in these types of games are always made to be broken. You're going to constantly be running into abilities and synergies that let you bypass that, so in this game, you will have tons of tactical freedom. Now let's move on to synchronization attacks, a core mechanic to Metal Slug Tactics. If you hit someone while they're in the line of sight of a teammate and within range, that teammate will hit them as well. This is a really fun and important mechanic because it allows you to run and gun with confidence. It's almost like you're setting up aggressive traps against the enemy, except instead of waiting, you're just taking the fight to them. You're not waiting for them to come to you. You're not waiting for them to be overwatched and next come. You are going to the enemy, you are running, and you are gunning. And just in general terms, you typically always want to prioritize sync attacks whenever possible because they're such an integral mechanic and your characters won't do that much damage on their own. Just remember what I said before, friendly fire is on and you can end up in sync attack situations where you end up hitting your own teammate after the enemy has been cleared out. This has happened to me countless times with me not paying enough attention. It will happen to you. It's kind of funny to be honest. But just keep in mind, friendly fire is on, even for sync attacks. Let's talk about abilities now, another core aspect of the Metal Slug Tactics gameplay. And really, this is such a big topic. There are so many different abilities that you can probably do like a two hour video about this. So I'm just going to give you an overview to make sure you're set up for success when you're playing the game. Every single character plays wildly differently and has active and passive abilities. So some of them might be more support oriented, like, you know, raising up shields, or some of them might be more firepower oriented, like calling it an airstrike. You can always check out your potential abilities between runs in the menus or read about the ones you have equipped in the bottom left character panel. Now, of course, abilities cost adrenaline points, which you mainly get from moving, like I mentioned before, and you want to be constantly using your abilities whenever you can. There's no need to be stingy with them because you'll always be refreshing those adrenaline points. Don't think of abilities as something special you save up for. Think of them as everyday tools for combat. It's definitely going to take you some time to remember everyone's abilities or think about how they might work together with another ability, but don't worry, that part will just come naturally as you play the game. The main takeaway here is that you should be using your abilities as often as you can. They're not something special, they're something you use all the time. Switching gears now, let's talk about cover and elevation, and this isn't XCOM where you're taking cover on most parts of the environment. Many maps will often feature specific cover points, and to take cover, just go to the blue square indicated by a cover point, and you'll get shields from that cover. 
Basically, the shields act how you would expect, they reduce the damage that's coming at you. There's just one thing to keep in mind with cover though, and like many other objects in the environment, it can be destroyed. The amount of cover it provides is also the HP that it has. Now in terms of elevation, the thing you should know there is that many weapons cannot fire when there's an elevation change between you and the opponent. So if you're way above or way below an enemy, you probably can't hit them by default. However, certain weapons like grenades or specific character abilities can overwrite that. Remember, this game gives you lots of freedom. It lets you attack scenarios how you want them to. Rules are just guidelines and you break them constantly. Plus, you can always use elevation as a way of keeping characters safer than they would be normally, and you can kind of pepper opponents as they try to climb up to you. By the way, this game lets you pilot metal slugs. Of course it does. You just need to move a character into them on the map, and then you can go crazy. Vehicles use a set fuel system to move and attack, but you can attack multiple times with them during a turn. So in general, if you see a vehicle, you want to get in there because it'll decimate most enemies, you know, you can go on a rampage with them, you can move a lot, you can attack a lot. Just remember, you'll need to eject manually if you're getting low on health, because if the vehicle goes, your character inside will go as well. And yeah, of course, you can revive characters with the coin system, but you want to save those up for really dire situations. Moving on to progression now, you should know that characters level up each run from the beginning, allowing you to improve their weapons and abilities. You can also find upgrades from doing missions, and there are shops between worlds where you can buy or sell whatever you need. Money persists, so if you don't see something you want, just save it for later. You can also unlock all sorts of stuff between runs, including new abilities, new weapons, specific loadouts for characters that completely change how they play, and totally new characters as well. There's a lot going on here and it can be confusing figuring out what you should get, but keep in mind that for every character you can click in the bottom right to see kind of how they're supposed to play quote unquote. You can modify that of course, but it will give you an idea of the playstyle for that character. And my general advice is simply think about where you're struggling or where you died on the last run and look for upgrades that will try to negate that. Or if you're doing a great job already, you can just double down on what's working for you. Okay, we're nearing the end here, so let me tell you two things you absolutely need to know before I go. Number one, you only need to do the main objective of a mission for it to end. That means you can put yourself in truly dire circumstances, but as long as you meet that objective, it's all good, you'll get the victory. Even if some of your characters get knocked out, no worries, there's no permadeath by default. So if things are looking bad, just focus on that main objective to get out of that mission. The other thing to know is that you can figure out what the missions are going to be by looking at their objectives on the map. You can only do three missions per world, so you might be tempted by the ones with the biggest potential rewards, but once you click on them, you might find that their objectives don't really suit your playstyle or personal enjoyment, or they might just be too challenging. So my advice here is just focus on the missions you actually want to do. Don't go chasing objectives blindly just for a big reward. Make sure you see the objective first and figure out, hmm, does this sound doable based on my playstyle, based on my skill level, that kind of thing. If you fail once, the run is over, so think twice before helping out Rumi carry her stuff across the map for the 900th time. Gosh dang it Rumi, how are you always in trouble and how do you always need help? Anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Your support really helps out the channel a lot. Plus, it helps me not cry myself to sleep every single night. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. <laughs>